Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an interactive Blockbusters style quiz game that you can use in classrooms as a starter or plenary. And as you see here, I've got 40 blocks in front of me. And what I would do is during the lesson, um, I would get students perhaps to either choose a number corresponding to a question. If they get the question right, then they click on that box and that box disappears. Um, and I could do it with the same thing with letters. So I could have a letter uh, and students would have to come up with a word that begins with that letter. And again, if they get it correct, they click on the box and it disappears. And eventually, um, whether they're in teams or individually, the students will be getting rid of the blocks around the image in order to be able to identify what the image is. And eventually they'll clear that many around, for, uh, around the uh, um, image itself, the image at the back, that they'll be able to identify it and win that round. So I'm going to show you how to create this uh, interactive blockbuster style game. So the first thing I'm going to do is to insert a square shape. Um, I'm using the rectangle shape there. Um, of course, to make it into a square can be a little tricky. Um, what I tend to do is hold down the shift key. Uh, the shift key on the keyboard then locks the shape uh, to be exact, so it's an exact square. So I'm gonna bring it to about that size there and I'm going to then decide on the style. Not terribly important, but I'm going to choose a sort of a yellowish style. I'm going to use the built-in shape effects as well, just to make that look a little nicer. Um, and once I've got my shape, the next thing I need to do is to um, add either a letter or a number to it. So if I right click on it and edit text, I'm going to put, uh, I'll put an A in this one. Um, I used numbers in the previous one, I'll use letters now. I'm going to click back on the shape and I'm going to increase the font size and I'm going to make it uh, black. I think that would stand out better. There we are. Uh, we could change the font style as well. Let's change it to that. There we are. That'll do. So that's my first shape. Now, the next thing to do before we start copying this and duplicating it across the whole screen is to add an animation. So with the shape selected, I'm going to go up to animations at the top. And I tend to open up the animation pane as well, just so I can see what's going on. And then click this Add Animation button. Um, now, you can choose any of the exits. It's the exits you're choosing. Uh, down here, you have more exit effects as well, which you can uh, preview and have a little look at, see what that would look like. Um, I tend to go for the shrink and turn for the Blockbusters game, but it's entirely up to you. Once you've chosen the exit effect, click OK, but we're not quite done yet on the animation. Click back on the shape to select it and making sure that we have here the animation selected. There are two things to do. The first thing is to make the um, animation a little longer. These tend to be quite quick animations uh, happening in one second or less. And for this kind of game, a little bit of suspense is good. So I tend to increase that. I'm going to increase it to two and a half seconds. Now, the second thing to do is the trigger. Uh, we need this square to disappear, to exit, when we click on this square. So we have to use the trigger up here. Um, I'm going to click on trigger and then choose on click of. Now you'll only have one shape on here unless you've put a whole load of menus and titles and background boxes and whatnot on there. If you're not sure what this shape is, then the animation pane here will show you. In the animation panel, you'll see that the pink highlighted animation is the one that you've just added and it'll tell you what the shape is. So we can see it is rectangle 46. So that's where the animation pane is quite handy sometimes. So I'm going to click on the trigger and select on click of rectangle 46. In other words, do this animation when we click this rectangle. So I'm going to click on that. I can then close the animation pane. And the next thing to do is to duplicate this. Um, you could copy and paste it, but copy and paste, even if you're using keyboard shortcuts, is two clicks. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. I prefer Control D, which is duplicate. 
So I've duplicated this. Now, Control D or duplicate is really handy. Watch what happens. Watch how easy this is. First of all, I'm going to snap those two shapes together so they are now uh, next to each other. But now, if I press Control D again, um, oops, no, I didn't do that. Okay, let me let me try this again without clicking off this time. Uh, Control D. <laughs> yes, now it's done done it the wrong way from what I was hoping to do uh, because I um, was messing around there but if I control D now you'll see this is what would happen if you weren't clicking off or messing around um, that it automatically puts the duplicated item in the same relative to, uh, position to the item that you are duplicating so if I duplicate the first box and I move the duplicated box right next to it to the right then each duplication after that copies it to the right the same distance. Uh, I'll show you with all of these. I'm going to highlight all of those boxes and do Control D. Then I'm going to move all these boxes down, snap them underneath, and then Control D and D and Control D once more. So then I've got my grid done really, really quickly. Nice little uh, handy tip that for shapes. I'm going to move that to uh, roughly the center. Of course you could put all sorts of things like titles and whatnot in there. Um, the great thing about this is, as if I just show you now, um, each of these boxes is already individually animated. So the animation that we added earlier on has been um, duplicated along with everything else. So all we've really got to do now is to decide what's going to go in each of these boxes. So you could put uh, different letters in here, obviously. Um, there are different ways you could do this. You could either um, do this uh, in a case of um, what C, uh, or what C is it that, and then give them a question where the answer begins with the letter C. Um, you could have numbers, like I did at the beginning, uh, which would allow you to say, OK, so question 14 on the list is... Um, so it's a, it's a variety of ways that you could do this, or you could certainly get them to choose the um, number or letter if you wish to. Now I'm not going to sit here and do all of these in different letters, there's no need, you get the idea. Once you've done each of these uh, boxes with either a letter or a number, combination of both if you want to, um, in here, the next thing to do is to put the image that you want them to uh, be looking for. So the image that is hidden behind all these. You'll notice I've not put an image behind them. That's because it's easier to put it in front to begin with, get it all sized and set up properly, and then send it to the back. So let's get an image of a router. Uh, so I'm going to bring up Router. Now, of course, when we are searching for images um, as teachers or lecturers um, in the professional capacity, we do need to think about licensing. So click on Search Tools and make sure you select Usage Rights and then choose either Label for Reuse or uh, Label for Reuse with uh, Modification. I'm going to choose li uh, Label for Reuse. Click on this image here. Uh, view Image. Yep, that looks good, good quality, and you can either save this image, uh, or of course you can certainly copy it, that works uh, most of the time as well. So I'll copy this image across, there we are, uh, I'll need to get rid of the white background, so um, in PowerPoint um, you can simply go to Format, Remove Background, and that brings up this nice pink shading, or it will do in a moment, there we are. I'll just increase the crop size box there, so we've got the whole image. And just preview that, but with a plain white background. Yes, yeah, so basically what it's doing, if you're not familiar with the Remove Background tool in PowerPoint, um, anything that's pink will be removed. Um, it's automatically, uh, sort of intelligently worked out where the background is. Yes, that looks good. So I will click on, uh, click on Keep Changes, and that removes the background. Now I can just make sure this is in the right position, and I can make it slightly larger. You want to try and get the image to almost completely fill the whole of the um, the, the range of boxes. Uh, obviously at the moment with this image, anyone choosing the first column or the last column not going to get uh, any background image, but you can, you can change that. You can hide it anywhere in there. Anyway, there's my image. Uh, the next thing to do is to send it to the back. So I click on the image, uh, right click on it and choose send to back and then again send to back and that's hidden it behind the images. So now when we uh, play the presentation, each of these boxes when clicked will 
vanish, will disappear, and will slowly reveal the image behind so that eventually, hopefully, the students will be able to identify that. So whichever team or student does correctly identify it, wins the point, wins the round, wins whatever you want to do. So there we are. That's uh, a simple blockbuster type um, game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, found it useful. If you did, please do consider giving this video a thumbs up. It does genuinely make a difference. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, or this is the first video that you've seen, please do click that red subscribe button. It does make a difference. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do leave them below in the comments. I do read comments and I reply to them as well. And I hope very much to see you in the next video. Bye for now.